Hello. In this video, I'm going to uh, talk about the substitution reactions of alcohols. And this is actually going to be the first in a series of videos on how to principally convert alcohols into alkyl halides, uh, though a few other substitution reactions will be covered at the end. Um, the first uh, way that we can talk about converting alcohols into alkyl halides involves using the hydrohalic acids. So we're talking about hydrogen chloride, it's hydrogen bromide, etc. Uh, I'm going to be generic uh, for just a moment. Uh, and this is a reaction that will convert alcohols into alkyl halides. And in particular, uh, it's worth noting that as usual, three of the hal halogens behave and one doesn't. Uh, hydrogen fluoride is not particularly uh, well suited to this reaction. But hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide work. Uh, on a tertiary alcohol, like the example that I've shown, this is actually a, an SN1 substitution. And um, it's very possible, you know, depending on where you are, what book you're using, who your instructor is, uh, that you may have actually discovered or discussed this reaction in the context of SN1 uh, reactions. And so I'm going to draw out the mechanism. And, and again, I'm just going to be generic. We have hi hydrogen. Uh, we have HX. So this reaction mechanism starts off with a proton transfer step uh, between the alcohol and the hydrohalic acid. And this generates a uh, oxonium cation. Uh, we have an extra proton there on, on that alcohol oxygen and the halide anion. Uh, so then it's worth noting that the pKa's of these you know, hydrohalic acids are really low, really negative. These are some of the strongest acids out there. And that's one reason why hydrogen fluoride doesn't work, because it has it is a weak acid uh, and not a strong acid. And then the, the pKa of oxonium ions are somewhere in the order of minus 2 to minus minus 2, minus 3, uh, depending on the structure of other things. So over here on the right, we have the weaker of the two acids, which means this is the direction favored in equilibrium. And sometimes it's worth remembering that reactions like these are uh, equilibrium reactions even when we might actually be talking about equilibrium between two, well, honestly, two strong acids. Uh, and so this first step in our SN2 reaction is a very important step because what we are doing is activating the leaving group. In your, when you learn about SN1 reactions and SN2 reactions initially, um, you discuss leaving group ability as being uh, related to how stable this thing is going to be uh, falling off uh, or, or coming off on its own. And so water is better leaving group than hydroxide. And I actually want to put some words in there. water is a better leaving group than hydroxide. Uh, and of all of the reactions that are going to be covered in this series, the uh, sort of general theme here that you need to activate the alcohol group to become a better leaving group will continue on through all of the reactions that are covered. 
Uh, after the proton transfer step, we move on to the actual uh, SN2 steps. We, we now have a good leaving group, and that good leaving group leads. That that's, that's happens in, in SN1 substitution mechanisms. And unless we forget about it, our halide ion is still around. We're going to need that later. And then, let's see, so here's my water as a leaving group and my uh, halide anion. As I said, it's still here, and that's important because what happens next is that our halide anion and our carbocation get together and good things come of it. Well, a new carbon halogen bond comes of it anyway. There we go. Uh, SN1 type mechanism. This me reaction tends to follow an SN1 type mechanism even on secondary substrates. So if you happen to have a, a molecule that looks like this, and I'm not going to be too specific about stereochemistry at the moment. Um, let's use HBr to be specific. And while you would get... Uh, some substitution product at the, the spot where the leaving group was, you would also get some substitution product elsewhere. Since this is an SN2, SN1 reaction, you know, we still need to, to, you know, we still need to worry about carbocation rearrangements. And uh, in the next videos in the series, I'm going to detail uh, ways to get around this carbocation rearrangement problems because very frequently uh, in organic chemistry, while it's important to be aware of carbocations, we actually have a desire to avoid them because we, we don't want multiple consequences or multiple outcomes of the same reaction. Primary alcohols react by uh, the SN2 pathway. Uh, so if I have here, uh, you know, like one butanol, uh, and we'll use hydrogen chloride as an example. Um, and it's worth noting that because of these, these acids are actually protic molecules, they're disadvantaged to, to want to do the SN2 pathway get here make my SN2 look correctly uh, and so the reaction either needs heat or uh, an additional catalyst uh, needs to be added like zinc chloride uh, to make this reaction operate uh, under conditions that frankly don't uh, favor SN2 type reactions And, you know, as a mechanism, we're still talking about protonating the, the leaving group, reacting it with hydrogen chloride, protonating the alcohol to make it a better leaving group, like that, like this. Now, uh, since we're at a primary position, we can't have uh, a carbocation, or we shouldn't draw carbocations at primary position, so we can just have nucleophilic attack. Uh, uh, let's move my chloride anion up here so that my arrows don't look awkward. Sort of sometimes funny about my arrows. Uh, 
And here we go. Uh, and because these kinds of reactions require either heat or a Lewis acid catalyst of some kind, there are uh, additional consequences that might occur if we need to, to do them on primary alcohols. Uh, in the next video, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to outline some other approaches to convert alcohols into to alkohalides or other things. Um, that avoid SN1-like conditions. Now, SN1-like conditions are still perfectly fine if you have a tertiary uh, alcohol because, yes, the carbocation forms, but it's not likely to rearrange. But for primary and secondary, uh, where either we have to worry about rearrangements or we have to worry about uh, beating up the, the alcohol substrate in order to get something to happen, it, it would be, be nice if we had... Uh, set of conditions that were more predisposed to SN2 reactions. And so that's where we're going. Thank you for watching.